Today we are talking about how to deal with depression and kind of what is depression, right? Because I think I think this is an interesting topic and somebody had brought it up in one of the comments in a previous video. So I thought I'd talk about the topic as a whole. And the first thing that stands out to me when I think about depression is that there's several different kinds of depression. The first kind is maybe a clinical depression where there's some sort of a chemical imbalance in your brain and you're basically broken in a mechanical way. There's a chemical problem, you can't function correctly, and because you are broken, the only way to fix you is to go to some sort of a physician and be prescribed some variety of a drug which might help to offset that imbalance. And that's a real thing. There are people who have a clinical depression and it could be all sunshine and rainbows and life is absolutely amazing and these people are still gonna just feel like life is not worth it and it's all gray and hopeless and uh, so there's that and i'm really not out to address that i'm not really making this video to talk about that because if it's something which you either can't fix or it's something that has to be addressed through some variety of a clinical diagnosis and drugs, then, you know, that's that's a, a topic for health professionals and something, you know, outside of my scope. But there's another kind of depression, and that is probably a lot more common and that's when you just basically aren't happy because you're not getting your way you want life to be different than what it is for some reason and then you're just in a bad mood because life isn't going the way you want it to and we all experience that kind of depression It's normal and it affects us all. And we have the opportunity to really do only two things when we encounter that sort of depression or maybe a better word for it would be disappointment. We can change and say, okay, I don't like the way I feel. And so I'm gonna do something different so that I can potentially get a better result. I don't like the condition of my body, so I'm going to work out more. Or I don't like my relationship status, so I'm going to reach out more and work on having more people in my life or yes, start dating or something like that, right? There's a lot of different things you can do. If you're, if you're feeling like there's something deficient in your life, you can go out and find some of that thing that you need to make your life more well-rounded and whole. And it's important to be able to take into consideration the change that you should be making in your life. Being unhappy is not necessarily just something that you're supposed to accept oftentimes it's kind of like touching a hot stove with your bare hands it's there to teach you to send you a signal so that you will understand that you should change your course and invest more in things which will meet your needs better so it's important to listen to that voice when it hits, when you feel like you're in a funk, when you don't feel like you're in a good mood. It's really important 
to self-reflect and be honest and say, okay, you know, I'm not really feeling it right now, but why? Like, what is, what is the, the universe trying to tell me, if you will? What is the lesson to be learned here? How do I want to change so that I can open myself to the blessings that I would like in my life? But then there's other times when life just is what it is, right? I think it's interesting that if you go down the rabbit hole of aspirational teachers, eventually you'll find this notion that positive thinking can completely change your life. And I believe that. The idea of thinking good things into existence is not a complete hoax. It's true. If you have a positive outlook on life, you're more likely to attract positive things into your life. But it's also true that life is a naturally depressing experience. And by that, I'm primarily referring to the fact that life is temporary. Life goes on forever in the sense that it continues to evolve in all of its many different forms. If you cut down a tree, the tree will rot, it will become compost, the bugs will die, they will rot, they will become fertilizer, and then a new tree will sprout up, and eventually you'll have a new forest after you cut down the old one. So life goes on, and that's a really positive aspect of existence. In that sense, there is no such thing as death. There is no such thing as an end to anything. There are no downsides in the greatest scheme of things because nature is not finite. It goes on and on in a self-satisfying circle. And so in a sense, life is not depressing. But the individual life is. Even if you have the best life you possibly could ask for, hope for, or imagine, all the money in the world, the best health, the best looks, the best luck, there's still going to come a time when your life is over. When you run out of luck and you run out of youth and you run out of all of those things, when you're at the end of your life and money is no longer relevant because you don't have any time left. You see, you could say that you're comfortable with life and all of its changes, but the reality is nobody wants their life to end. We all want to cling to the idea of eternal youth, of eternal life. But the reality of one human life's existence is that we're there for a short time. And then we move on. And life is filled with its own little disappointments. It doesn't mean that life's bad, and it doesn't mean that you can't make the best of it. But there are times when you can't think your way out of the corner. You can't just think positive thoughts and then by some sort of magic, you're going to discover that reality is different than what it was yesterday. Sometimes you do have to accept things. And it doesn't necessarily have to be something huge like accepting the inevitability of your death. It could be something simple like realizing that when you think about whether you want to get out of bed in the morning, you really aren't feeling it and you don't want to. But when you start accepting that it's just part of your routine, it's just something you do and you don't really ask the question, do I like this? Do I not like this? You just do it because you've accepted that getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth and making your coffee and taking your shower and all of those things is just part of life. Whether you like it, whether you don't like it, you do it. When you accept that something's part of your life, when you accept that something is real, then 
you can move past that feeling that you're so broken that you cannot function unless something magically changes to go your way. So it really comes down to these two ideas for most of us. It's if you're not feeling good about life, then what are you doing to change it? Are you going to do something different? It doesn't matter how much you say you want to be more fit if you then proceed to eat a bunch of junk food and never exercise. It doesn't matter how much you say you wish you had better relationships in your life if you continue to never make any effort to include other people in your life. You can't expect that people are going to be genuine with you if you never give them or others in general the time of day. You see, you have to you have to plant the seeds if you want the harvest. And you also have to understand that not every season is planting season. Sometimes what you have to do is accept that this isn't the season for whatever it is you were looking for. And accept that even if you can't have what you were hoping for, you can still make the best of it and have a good life using the tools that you do have at your disposal. Partly accepting, partly changing. And those are two things that we're really not very good at. We're not good at changing. We're not good at accepting. I could say that I want to have a productive weekend and do a bunch of things that I thought were cool that I wanted to get done. And then the reality is it's awfully tempting to go down the rabbit hole of sitting down and watching YouTube videos and scrolling Facebook because that's mindless and easy, which is fine. But then I can't complain that I didn't get some other project done. I could say that I wish I was an author and I wrote a book and I just can't get into it. But I can't really blame anyone other than myself if another week goes by and I never sit down to practice my skill of writing. And by the same measure, you can never be happy if you're always flying in the face of reality and you don't want to accept the truth. Maybe you have some toxic elements of old relationships in your life and you cling to them and you say, oh my goodness, I just hope that it'll work out or whatever it might be. You hang on to false hopes because it's easier to keep a fantasy alive than it is to let go of a familiar lie and move forward in a different direction. Sometimes you have to accept reality, even if you don't like it, and then just stop trying to convince yourself that things are what they're not. And then sometimes, sometimes maybe people really are just miserable and depressed because they have some kind of a chemical imbalance in their mind and they need to go to the doctor and get some pills. But what I will say about that is an awful lot of people are depressed and I don't think that all of those people are clinically depressed. I think that they are settling for coping mechanisms because coping is easier than facing reality. Just like I enjoy playing computer games because I think they're cool. The idea of gaming gets me excited. And yet... There's a lot of people who play games just to escape reality. It's that sense of, I hate life, so I'm going to escape into a video game just to try to kill time. So the question is, why, why are we doing the things we're doing? It's not that any one of them is bad, but are we trying to cope with pain instead of having the discipline to deal with it? 
And I think many times we are, whether it's medicating or doing drugs or drinking or partying or gaming. There's so many different things that fall under this umbrella of coping. And it's not that they're necessarily bad or evil, but you shouldn't resort to a coping mechanism if what you really need is to get better at the discipline of accepting the truth and being disciplined enough to adopt change in your life. Sometimes you just start with a little bit of a routine, simple things that you can go back to and say, you know what, I'm not going to have a pity party. I'm going to do something different and I'm going to focus on the positive instead of the negative. And accept that even if I don't understand why things are happening the way they are, I choose to have the faith to believe that everything happens for a reason. If you really look at the universe in the broadest sense, and you factor into your ethos the question of what is time, what does the passage of time mean, how does it work, I think the overall overarching consensus is that we do live in an ordered universe and even if we don't understand what our place in it is whether we choose to look at life through the lens of faith or science there is consolation in the concept that we are part of something greater than ourselves a story that's written in the pages of time in a more permanent and meaningful way than just randomness. Maybe everything that happens is just coincidence and, and random. But even if it is, if you set something in motion, that implies origin, it implies destination. It implies significance. Because nothing happens for no reason. As Carl Sagan said, the cosmos is a way, well, we are a way for the cosmos to know itself. And so maybe we can advance that mission of the cosmos to know itself by being bold enough to know ourselves to stop and be honest and say how do i feel about my life and and what am i going to do to change it and, I, and i'll close with this one particular idea which i think is perhaps a, a good thing to to think about and that is that life gives us a lot of feelings. It gives us things that we feel we should do. It gives us things we feel we shouldn't do. And we really ought to, we ought to listen. We ought to do the things that make us feel good in life and steer away from the things which make us feel bad. There's often a notion that you should be a glutton for punishment. You should go out and say, I'm going to make my life as hard, as miserable, as unnatural as it can possibly be. I'm going to see what I can do to drag myself up the steps of the cathedral and bloody my knees as some sort of a penance because pleasure in life, good things in life, things we enjoy are somehow viewed as inferior to the art and discipline of suffering. Now, we might not be uh, 
whipping ourselves or doing anything crazy like that. But sometimes we do have the notion that things that we truly enjoy are stupid or things that we feel we want aren't what we really should be wanting. So therefore we push it out of our mind. We don't just follow our instinct and trust that it will lead us in the right direction. And quite often the things that cause trouble in our lives aren't our instinct. It's that we chose to pay attention to what other people wanted us to do instead of listening to our own inner voice, which is a remarkably reliable compass, all things considered. There's no one more qualified, this is the truth, that there's no one more qualified to give you guidance in your life than yourself. And there will be people who come along and they will say, well, you know, if you, uh, you know, if you pay, pay some extra money, then, you know, we'll, we'll give you the advice you need. And it doesn't mean you can't get good advice from other people, but the truth is generally we know what we ought to do. We have a voice of conscience that tells us what we ought to do. We have signals that come to us all the time, reinforcing positives and giving us emotional signals about what maybe we should avoid. And if we listen to those things, we'll probably wind up making decent choices without needing anyone else to tell us what to do or what to think or selling us some sort of a solution externally to a problem that should be reconciled internally. And that's the truth of, of most, most things, I think, that fall into the category of depression. That's really exactly what it is. It's external solutions to internal problems. It's saying that instead of you working on yourself, we're going to give you some pills to pop. Or instead of you doing the things that you want to do in your life, we're going to give you a way to forget about your life. You see? Life should be lived honestly and thoughtfully. And honesty is a rare thing in the world. You know, people, people, especially in a world of technology and social media, people really find it super easy to put on a show, to look like they're doing good, to act like they're doing good, to sh act like they care, to appear to be conscientious, to uh, put on a show to give off the vibe that they're loving, whatever it might be. But then the reality is they will always avoid commitment and they always avoid things that are really grounded in any kind of meaning because life is lived as if it were some sort of an Instagram feed where you can just, you know, like things you like and delete things you don't. And, well... One consequence of that kind of a lifestyle is after a point, we don't know the truth anymore because we never think about anything unless it is convenient to us. And that's like a sugar diet. It's like living off of Skittles all the time. At some point, you don't really have any stomach for anything savory because all you ever do is immerse yourself in things which distract you from reality and, and empower you to avoid facing inconvenient truths. Then it gets harder and harder and after a while you just kind of believe your own lies and there's no urge to change anymore because you know you're you've lived your life in a cage so long that you don't have any any desire to even think about leaving because you don't know what freedom even looks like anymore. Sometimes the first thing you can possibly do that's going to be the best thing you can do for your own mental health is just 
pull off the band-aid and face the truth it's like when you you don't want to face you don't want to go check the mail because you're afraid they're, they're going to they're going to be a bill in there well at some point you got to face face the truth and if you're broke then be broke and then start working up to you know from 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 the ground up if that's what you have to do you know just understand that kicking the can down the road doesn't change the reality and so you're better off i think to just accept accept life in a completely unabridged way and take a take a solid inventory of where you're at and maybe that is going to be something that reveals truths you don't really want to face and that's okay it's all right because sometimes you just have to have a conference hour with yourself and then you got to trust that your intuition is worth following so if you are not feeling good about your life for whatever reason my challenge would be ask yourself if you know why and if you know why you're just you know you're just sad or frustrated because life isn't going your way then do something to change your life even if it doesn't bear immediate results at least you can say you know here's something i'm doing something to give myself solace that there's a possibility that tomorrow will be different or better than today and if something's beyond your control then accept it don't constantly pour energy into raging against a night that is inevitable cut back on coping mechanisms things that don't bring joy into your life they're just dulling the perceived pain of a life that is broken and finally stop trying to be happy stop trying to be happy in the sense that you constantly are asking yourself if you're happy that you're constantly analyzing so determinedly to see if life is good because sometimes if you overthink things too much you think yourself into a box and you just get so fixated on asking the question am i happy well you can't be because a watched pot doesn't boil it's like if you go on vacation and you said i'm gonna have fun i'm gonna have a lot of fun on this vacation and then every minute of the time you're on vacation you're constantly analyzing your experience to see if you're having the maximum possible amount of fun you're probably not going to have fun because the whole point of fun only happens when you let go and surrender some part of the experience to faith. So finally, whether you're an agnostic or a religious person, no matter your outlook, always leave a little bit of room in your life for faith the belief that whether it is clear to you or not all things nevertheless work out for good till next time good luck on your adventure thanks for watching